One of the most common arguments used against the theory of evolution and the old earth argument in general is that there are no transitional fossils, meaning fossils that show traits from an ancestral organism as well as a descendant organism. Transitional fossils are important to the theory of evolution because it shows how organisms change over time and is evidence that all organisms today share a common ancestor. There are numerous examples in the fossil record showing that different groups of organisms and clades branched off to form all the various different clades we see today. Transitional fossils are physical evidence organisms change and share a common ancestor, yet creationists claim we have never found a single transitional fossil backing up all the transitions that we can confirm without the fossil record. They claim we have never found evidence for all the lineages we propose, which I will get to later. These transitions include terrestrial apes to humans, fin fishes to tetrapods, in other words the transition to land animals, ancestral artiodactyl to a whale, dinosaurs to birds, Rhapsid to mammals, invertebrates to chordates, among many others, even though each has numerous fossils backing them up. Any doubter of evolution, creationist or not, will be forced to defend their worldview against the fossil record here and can do one of three things. They can accept the transitional fossils but demand there now needs to be more transitions to stow it to steady change. One can deny it is a transitional fossil entirely and state it does not count as a transitional fossil and instead now requires a transition to show that the animal evolved. Finally, they can say it doesn't count as a transitional fossil and declare it an invalid hoax, somehow going unnoticed by the worldwide community of scientists. The transitional forms creationists look for are unreasonable and are not supported by, by the fossil record because they cannot exist. One such example is the crocoduck, proposed by creationists Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort. According to Cameron, not a single transitional form has ever been found, and that scientists can't provide him with a, quote, crocoduck, a fictitious transitional form between a crocodile and a duck. While we're here, paleontologists have, in fact, found a, quote, crocoduck in the Sahara Desert, although it's not a transition between a duck and a crocodile. An Atosuchus minor is simply a prehistoric crocodile with a mouth similar to the bill of a duck. The problem with the proposed crocoduck is that it doesn't make sense to look for it, and advocating it shows a complete lack of understanding about evolution. It seems that the people who advocate the crocoduck want transitions between current species, the hybrids imagined by ancient peoples to show a quote, change. This is based on the presupposition that all animals living today are as they were since time immemorial and this is not what evolution predicts. Evolution predicts that we will find a common ancestor between two species, and this is what a transitional form is. It will share features between present species and that common ancestor. The crocoduck doesn't fit the description of a transitional form because one can predict that the crocoduck will evolve not into a crocodile or a duck. It is the imaginary hybrid between the two. Instead, the common ancestor between crocodiles and ducks is the Archosaurus, a prehistoric reptile that predates the dinosaurs and is the ancestor to all Archosaurs. Archosaurus gives rise to the entire clade of Archosaurs, which comprises of both birds and crocodiles. From Archosaurus, we can find numerous transitions into ducks and crocodiles. On the duck side, we have Archaeopteryx lithographica, Dornis martini, and numerous other reptile-like birds and bird-like reptiles showing a transition into all the modern clades of birds. On the crocodile side, we have phytosaurs, such as Microraposaurus and Ursuchus, both of which are ancient aquatic reptilians that represent the evolution of crocodiles around the time of the first dinosaurs. The fossil record is rich when it comes to such transitions, and we have an enormous number of them stored in museums, and many are confirmed transitional forms between species over time. Of course, nearly all transitional forms are extinct, which is why the crocoduck does not exist, and if it did, it would be extinct. Birds and crocodiles are the only living members of Archosauria. The rest are extinct. Now, if one is to question the lack of transitional fossils, you can simply go into Google and search up a list of them. There are hundreds, the vast majority, very obscure yet fascinating fossil finds. For example, the superorder known as Afrotheria consists of a large variety of animals you would never expect to be part of the same clade order of Afrotheria is a large group of placental mammals that share a common ancestor which has its origins in northern Africa during the Eocene and Paleocene epochs. These include golden moles, elephant shrews, also known as senjis, rex, 
Anthraxes, also known as Dasties, Proboscids, including elephants, mastodons, and mammoths, all Sirenians, including gongs and manatees, and orders which are entirely extinct, such as Ptolemids and Brithopods, and possibly Euromantids. What we see here in the superorder of Afrotheria is one of the most well documented examples of evolution in history. The common ancestor for all Afrotheres probably originated in China in the form of Penskia Yupingi, a dog like rhinoceros like ancestor of both Afrotheres and Perissodactyls. Radinskia is also an example of the explosion of placental mammals that directly come after the fall of the dinosaurs. In the early Paleocene, variations of this species eventually migrate and adapt to the different niches and environments. Radinskia's descendants probably migrated westward because we see one of its descendants, Erythotherium azuzorum, making its home in Morocco some 60 million years ago. Erythotherium is the oldest known proboscidean, a member of the order of elephants. Erythotherium was relatively small, only around the size of a dog, the smallest proboscidean ever found, but, is, but it is basal to all proboscids. Five million years later, we find more diversity in the order of proboscidea, such as Phosphotherium, which lacks the trunk or snout we associate with elephants. Phosphotherium is an example of adaptive radiation, as it was adapted to life in swamps and eating aquatic bushes, making it an ancestor to other later members of Afrotheria. Up until this point, we see an obscure fossil record, but the transitions begin to get more fluid during the Eocene Epoch. Dowotherium makes its appearance in Eocene Morocco with a lower mandible of anatomically modern proboscids around 56 million years ago. And by 50 million years ago, we have Numidotherium from Eocene Algeria, which has primitive tusks and trunk we would find and expect from a member of the proboscidae. The transitions are slow, but by 41 million years ago, Paleomastodon, which is undoubtedly an elephant. Dotherium, Mauritherium, and Arsenoitherium, while not elephants, are related to elephants because of their short, primitive trunks and tusk-like teeth. They are also more aquatic than modern elephants, which was ideal in the aquatic landscape of North Africa at the time. They are the grand uncles of modern elephants. This fossil record is probably more impressive than people realize because it shows the many transitions it took for the ancestral Afrotheres to evolve into elephants, as well as the convergent evolution that occurred in the aquatic Mauritherium and Baritherium. Even more impressive is the lineage of Cyrenians, which comprises of dugongs and manatees. Samus, the oldest Cyrenian known, was found in sediment 50 million years ago in Jamaica, along with Pezosiren. These are obviously Afrotheres because of their similarity in skull shape to contemporary Afrotheres, such as Numidotherium. Pezosiren and Prorostamus are known to act as hippopotamus-like ancestors of all Cyrenians. Their morphology is perfect for the amphibious lifestyle and the next transitional fossil we find. Siren, which was aquatic which we know because it's found in various parts of the world, only connected at the time by water. Proides, which comes somewhat later, represents an ancestor of dugongs, and the fact that it is often found in the same sediment as crocodiles shows that it was most likely estuarine, grant clinging to the boundary between the salt and fresh water. Siren, which comes more than 10 million years later, was taking at a shot at a completely aquatic lifestyle. Ethereum, another yet fully aquatic Cyrenian, had morphology allowing it for increased lung capacity and buoyancy. From there, history is clear. Afrotheria gave rise to all known Cyrenians and proboscideans. The process of fossilization does not permit many organisms to ever become fossilized, so we are never likely to find every species that ever lived. However, one does not need to say there are no transitional fossils. In the age of the internet, simply search up transitional fossils and hopefully you'll find a good, reliable list of transitional fossils. Of the few rare organisms that are lucky enough to get fossilized, we find plenty of transitional forms showing transition between high taxa. Doubt that lobed fish gave rise to tetrapods? Look for Osteolepis, Eustinopteron, Tiktaalik, Ichthyostega, and Pederpes. Talus to mammals? There are numerous synapsids to list here, such as Tinosuchus, Transevia, Prosaurus, Pachodon, Olesodon, Pelotodon, Pachodon, and Hadrocodium. Archaeopteryx is in a transitional form? Don't worry, we have Venator, Ornus, Raptor, Lulavis, Lucius Ornus, and Ornus, Ornus, Ichthyornus. Human apes? There are numerous, but why go looking for them? We are apes. 
Either way, there are numerous examples from the fossil record showing the strings that connect all life forms together, not to mention the incredible genetic similarity among species.